Every year when I celebrated the feasts of all saints and all souls, I find myself remembering my time among the carrier people who lived in and around Fort St. James, which is a northern community in the middle of British Columbia. For the carrier people, these days were holy, an important time to celebrate the Eucharist, and afterwards, no matter how cold or wet the weather was, a time to visit the cemetery in the village. Immediately after Mass, the people would silently walk to the large wooden cross in the middle of the graveyard. Once all had gathered again, a solemn prayer was spoken and holy water was sprinkled to the four directions, reminding us that we stood on holy ground. And then we were invited to respectfully remember the people who were buried there. At this point, families would drift away to the graves of their loved ones and friends to pray, bless, and share stories about each person they were remembering and honoring. The ritual wasn't complete until every grave was blessed and each name on the grave markers were recalled. What impressed me most was the communal connection the carrier people had with those who died. Their November ritual expressed the deep union that exists between the living and the dead. And the idea that the good done by one part of the faith community impacts the rest, even those who had gone before them marked with a sign of faith. And the awareness that these people, these saints, continue to support them on their journey of life and faith. Today, on All Saints Day, we celebrate that communion with all those unnamed saints who during their life on earth discovered the utter goodness at the core of their being and who now see God face to face. That marvelous cloud of witnesses whose communion takes us into the world to come. Ordinary people who accepted the Beatitudes found in today's Gospel and live the blessings and the promises that describe the path that Jesus and his disciples walked to bring about the reign of God in our world. A communion that reminds us that we are now children of God and that by grace and love we are being transformed into God's holy people. As we ponder the challenging and provoking message of the Beatitudes, Remember that this is a daily process, and each day we pray for the grace to grow more perfectly into the image of Christ, that his values and lifestyle become ours. As we hear the blessings today, may each of us hear the call to be the ordinary saints in our own time and place, to respond to these blessings in ways that transform us and our world. Blessed are the poor in spirit, people who are not too proud to admit that they are vulnerable, who are willing to admit that they stand in need of God and others. Blessed are the meek, people who are understanding, the ones who are slow to judge and quick to serve, who are concerned for the well-being of the other. Blessed are those who mourn, peoples who compassion allows them to feel the pain and suffering and others in a way that brings about consolation, comfort, and peace. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, people who will not settle for the status quo, people who will not rest as long as there are victims of economic and political order that benefit only the privileged and the strong, but ha that has little use for the weak and the defenseless in our society. Blessed are the merciful, people who are gracious to others, people who dare to forgive, people who always give others new chances. Blessed are the pure of heart, 
people who, who fully accept their inner spirit as part of God's own life, no matter their faults and weaknesses, who see the goodness and beauty of God in everything and everyone. Blessed are the peacemakers, people who see the oneness of everything and even as they are aware of differences, will not tire of resisting division, alienation, and discrimination. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous sake, those who are reviled or ill spoken of on account of Jesus, people who are prepared to accept the pain that goes with making good triumph over evil. What Jesus hints at in this closing beatitude is the following. This open, free, unpretentious, gentle, and forgiving attitude will get you into trouble. It is a risky undertaking. You may run the risk of being ostracized, of being in conflict with the world around you. But if you can adopt this lifestyle and be empowered by the Spirit of Christ, you will be giving birth to a new kind of world. Today, on the Feast of All Saints, let us give thanks for all the ordinary saints we have met on our journey of life and faith. Let us remember and honor them in a special way today. And may our communion with all the saints help us to live the Beatitudes in ways that bring about the reign of God in our world. Happy Feast Day.